This video is brought to you by Squarespace. <laughs> Never thought I'd be saying that. Balls. Inverse kinematics. Why the hell do I need it? Why would I want to use it? Why am I spending so much of my life trying to do it from scratch and put it in the game? Excellent questions. All will be answered on this lovely, lovely Thursday morning. All right, this right here is our background. Why on earth do we need this little guy over here to have inverse kinematics? This is why we need IK. Old man's plopping along. He's got boop, 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 boop. Oh no, I'm... I'm going up a very steep hill and now he's floating. I know about you, but that looks kind of bad. I don't want his foot floating in the air. That's kind of weird. So the way we solve this is by, of course, uh, having this guy over here, you know, in entirely 3D, right? And, you know, have him have bones and all kinds of stuff. The way we solve it is by uh, making the entire character 3D, ditching pixel art, and uh, having leg bones, right? Ignore the fact that, therefore, I know, I know, humans only have two. We put him into 3D, and now we've got these bones to manipulate, and we can actually, you know, kind of like imagine that we just fucking rip his leg down, right? And uh, kind of bend his knee in the other direction, so that it kind of looks like that, and that he's kind of like stepping there. A bit better. That's basically why we need inverse kinematics. Is that really a major issue? Could I have just gone about, you know, my day and making an actual game without going on this massive entire 3D tangent of trying to get 3D models rendering down into 2D space and doing all the math involved with passing 3D models and all that kind of stuff? Probably could, but that'd be a bitch move, all right? That would be a goddamn cop-out. Be stuck with this dumb shittery. I don't like that. That's cringe. So that is, in essence, why we need inverse kinematics. Bit of an oversimplification, but that's, that's really not an oversimplification. That's just exactly why I need it. <laughs> I encountered that one problem and I was like, hmm, how, how can we solve this? And that's the answer I came up with. And it turns out it benefited other areas of gameplay as well, which, you know, I talked about in my why I'm even doing 3D animations to begin with video, which is up here. But before we move on to that though, let's run a quick little thought experiment. Let's say you're trying to create something. Maybe you want to figure out your own way of growing your own niche little audience at some corner of the internet. God knows it's possible. There are a lot of people on the internet. Pick something and you want to make a living doing what you love doing. Sounds amazing. Instead of spending hours learning the very basics of web dev or hiring someone else to create your entire platform, <clears throat> you can actually create your own with absolutely zero experience using the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. What's that? Sponsors on the second channel? God damn. Seriously though, I've been using Squarespace on and off for goddamn years now. And whenever I need to whip up a quick website, that's my go-to option. All I do is boot open Squarespace and it's up and running in 10 seconds flat. Oh, what's that? Relative to thinks I'm a f tech support worker? Sure. I can make you a website with absolute ease thanks to Squarespace's intuitive design. A ton of features right out of the box like membership integration so you can get something more personal and set up your own online business. It's really goddamn easy and there's a bunch more cool stuff over there. So head on over to Squarespace, follow the link in the description, grab a free trial and you can use my code at checkout to save 10% off of your website or domain name and get crack a with your blank Squarespace. All right, peace. Massive thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and back to the content. So far, the problem that I'm trying to solve right now... <laughs> Hello! <laughs> it's a little hard to explain, but I'm basically trying to snap the bones to the mouse position exactly. Um, and it's working over here, but when I say changes to spine 3, it still looks like it's kind of working, right? But if we move it along a straight line, you can see it's got some drift. It doesn't go in a straight line, right? So it's on some sort of rotational axis. It's basically because because I need to loop through all the parents and reverse them as well. Because right now I'm only reversing one parent. It only works when there is only one parent, but if there's more than one parent, it kind of starts drifting again and doing all kinds of fuck shit. So I'm thinking that's the issue. I'm going to try and write that out and loop through all the parents and try and reverse them properly and see if that actually works uh we'll see how we go thinking that should be good uh, and then we've got this matrix that we can then apply over here and if all goes well that should have fixed things that looks pretty goddamn straight to me that doesn't look like it's drifting at all it is very rarely that things work the first time you do it but in this case 
the programming gods are with me. There's absolutely no drift. And uh, I, I guess the next thing that I need to do is introduce this back in. And I think this should put it to the correct mass position. Um, yeah, so that's that. What if I go up to spine three? Um, that looks like spine three. Uh, all right, let's try the foot or the leg. Leg, yeah, that doesn't look too right. You know, you would swear that that's spot on because it is. But when we go down further, it's not. So what's going on here? I am adding the local translation, which doesn't really make sense. And I'm subtracting the mouse position from the joint matrix, which kind of does make sense. Although in this case, it doesn't work. All right, so I figured it out. This mouse cursor position, it's in the model space, but I'm trying to set it as a translation, which is in the local joint space, right? I'm setting the translation down here and I'm not doing anything. So I have to do exactly what I did with the rotations and reverse those. So I've got to reverse the translations now as well. So in order to do that, pretty straightforward. I think I just pulled this bad boy. In fact, I could put it into the matrix. That's probably what I need to do. I don't know. I'm just gonna try, see what happens. T, I'm gonna reverse T as well. Rot map, I'm just gonna apply it to the rot map. And then M4, multiply M4, put at the mid, and then M4, translate B3, which is T. Uh, not sure if that's the right order, but we'll see how we go. And then that's the rot mat, and then that gets put in with this guy, and then translated. And then we're literally not gonna do any of these. That sh might work, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, hasn't done anything. All right, I'm gonna break these two out. Then I'm gonna check uh, what it actually looks like in Remedy. This guy, and I'm gonna check the transmat, which is zero. So that's interesting because it shouldn't be zero. Parent J spine one has no translation. Is it just spine one? Yeah, because we're referencing spine two. I might need to translate rotate, you know, in the correct order. Like it would make sense. It would definitely make sense to translate rotate in the right order instead of doing them all in lump. Surely I can just use the inverse spine matrix. It's got drift, the opposite direction. It's got drift as well. Um, so inverse spine matrix, it includes a rotational component. So maybe I just extract out the position. I don't know. So I do something like um, V3 test. All right, and then I go transmat is equal to M4 translate V3 test and just grab the translational component, which, you know, there doesn't seem to be any drift anymore, but now it's kind of fucked. Swap them around. Oh, oh, I think I've done it. All right, let's test that with spine three. No, I haven't done it. <sighs> another day, another dump. Inching closer to death by the second. Uh, there's one more thing I can try, which is do this afterwards. Do it after the rotation. That to me looks kind of like the root, almost. So maybe I have to do the parent instead of the next. Ooh, foot, leg four, leg four, spine three, spine one. Let's go, baby. Hell yes. Dunskis. After all these years, I have snapped the mouse position to whatever bone I want correctly this time, not incorrectly, absolutely perfectly. No drift whatsoever, right on the money in the correct space. That's exactly what I want. Holy fuck, that took some time. And literally all I'm doing is, you know, this is the very first idea I came up with, but I never implemented it because I thought it would be too difficult. But you know, it turns out it's exactly what I needed to do. You rotate the parent, you translate the parent, and then you do that all the way down to the root, rotate, translate, rotate, translate, rotate, translate, and then, you know, the final translate, which is the root. And then you literally just apply that to the mouse position in the model space, which took us a while to get as well. Just a feat in and of itself. And you times that by our matrix. And it's not called the rot mat anymore because it is um, got more than a rotation. So it's, we're gonna call this the, uh, it's kind of like the inverse bind, but it's the, wait a minute. There's no fucking way. Ah! Let me continue my sentence real quick. It's kind of like the inverse bind, but it's more like the parents inverse bind. All of this is literally the fucking parents inverse bind matrix. If I had just thought to use that from the start, we wouldn't have had any issues at all. Fuck. Ah! <laughs>
It's just the parent's inverse by matrix. <laughs> the reason I ruled out the inverse by matrix is because I didn't even use the parent. I just used the current joint's inverse by matrix. But of course it's not that, it's the parent's by matrix. Days of struggle. Days of trying to figure out what the fuck to do. And in reality, it was in front of me this entire time. I don't need any of this at all. None of this, none of this. All I needed all along was just this. One, two, three, four, five lines of code. Welcome to programming. <laughs> none of that really matters. All that matters is that I got there in the end. I came a long way. I learned a lot of things. How to reconstruct the parent's inverse bind matrix from scratch. But most importantly, what we have here now, absolute perfect snapping of the joint to the mouse position. And you know what we can do with that? We get started on IK again for the 17th time. Set a joint to the mouse position properly. Done. Absolutely done, skis homie. All right, boysies. Take care. Stay strapping. See you boys next time.